Hello friends, this is Mukesh Gupta. I welcome you all to this chemistry channel campaign. Today we will learn about one of the very common physical state of matter that is solid state. In our surroundings, we generally found substances in solid, liquid or gaseous phase. Most of the substances we use in our daily life are found to be solids. Even in periodic table, among the various elements, most of the elements are found to exist in solid state. These yellow dots, they are corresponding to those elements which are solids. Very few elements are there which exist in either liquid or gaseous state. Solid substances are rigid and this makes it different from the other two states of matter. Liquids and gases possess flowing tendency. They can flow and hence these are called fluids. However, solids do not possess this kind of property. In terms, these are rigid and the rigidity in solids that is attributed to presence of very strong interparticle force of attraction among the constituent particles. This is the major point which differentiates solid from liquids or gases. Solids are rigid whereas liquids and gases are fluids. Thus a solid substance may be defined as these are the form of matter which possess rigidity and hence possess a definite shape and a definite volume. Solids have definite shape, definite volume and these are rigid. The physical existence of a substance is decided by the net effect of two opposing forces. Whether a substance that will be solid, liquid or gas, it will be decided by the net effect of two opposite forces. One is called interparticle force of attraction and second one is the thermal energy. What are the two opposing factors? One is interparticle force of attraction and second one is the thermal energy. The resultant of these two factors will decide whether a substance will be solid, liquid or gas under a given set of condition. The first factor is interparticle force of attraction. These are the attractive forces which bind the constituent particles together. Here the green spheres they represent the constituent particle of the substance. The force of attraction that is trying to keep these particles close together that is interparticle force of attraction. The second factor is thermal energy. This is the energy possessed by the constituent particles due to temperature. This energy that varies with the temperature. With the rise in temperature the constituent particles possess more and more energy. They have higher thermal energy with the rise in temperature. This energy tends to keep the constituent particles apart as it tends to make them move faster. Simultaneous impact of interparticle attractive forces and thermal energy on the physical state of matter has been manifested. In gaseous states, the interparticle attractive forces are very weak whereas the molecules possess quite higher thermal energy. In liquid, the interparticle attractive forces predominate over thermal energy whereas in case of solid, the strength of interparticle attractive forces is quite stronger which binds the molecules very close together as a result of which this impacts the matter, a definite shape, definite volume and rigidity. Next we will find certain general characteristics of solids. Solids have definite shape and volume. As we have discussed, liquids they possess definite volume but their shape is not definite and in gases neither the shape nor the volume 
at f night. This is attributed to the strong interparticle forces of attraction. In solids, the constituent particles, they are very closely associated with one another. And the presence of these strong interparticle force that is responsible for the safe as well as definite volume of these substances. And due to the same reason, the constituent particles in solids, they are very closely packed. The interparticle distances are very small. In gases, the molecules or the constituent particles, they can move in every possible direction. Whereas, in case of solid, the particle-particle distances are very, very small. The solid substances are rigid and incompressible due to the same reason. These have high density. The constituent particles do not possess translatory motion in solids. They only oscillate about their mean position. In gases, the molecules, they possess translatory rotatory as well as vibratory motions but in case of solid only the constituent particles they move they vibrate about their mean position that means they possess only vibratory motions next we will classify solids on the basis of the arrangement of constituent particles, solids may be classified into two categories. One is crystalline solid and second one is amorphous solids. Just remember this classification is based on the arrangement of constituent particles. The particles they may be atom, they may be molecules or they may be ions. In crystalline solids, the constituent particles possess a regular orderly arrangement. Okay, these are the solid substances whose constituent particles possess a regular orderly arrangement. The particles they are arranged in a systematic pattern in a definite fashion. Okay, example are common salt, sugar, diamond. In these Solid substances, the constituent particles, they are arranged in a regular pattern, in a regular manner. On the other hand, amorphous solids are those solid substances whose constituent particles do not possess a regular orderly arrangement. This is the simple point of difference between these two types of solids. In one case, the particles are arranged in a definite pattern, in a regular manner, whereas in the second case, the particles do not have any regular arrangement. Examples are plastic, rubber, glass, starch, etc. All these solid substances, they possess irregular arrangement of their constituent particles. Now let us consider one example from each kind of solids, diamond and glass. Diamond is an example of crystalline whereas glass is amorphous solid. In diamond, the constituent particles, they are having a systematic pattern of arrangement, a regular order of arrangement, whereas in glass, the particles, they are not having any systematic or regular arrangement, the particles are disorganized. This difference in the arrangement of constituent particles leads to the difference in their properties. Because the property of solid is regulated by the nature of particle as well as their arrangement. Next, we will find some points of differences between crystalline and amorphous solids. These two types of solids may be differentiated on the basis of the following important points. The first point is arrangement of the constituent particles. Second is the melting point. The third point of difference is heat of fusion. Next, nature. The next point is isotropy and anisotropy. And the last point of difference is the surface on cleavage. We will discuss all these points one by one. The first point is 
the arrangement of their constituent particles. In a crystalline solid, the constituent particles, which may be ions, atoms, or molecules, are arranged in a definite geometric pattern throughout the entire solid. The order is so regular that knowing the arrangement at one site that at any other site can be predicted. This is called long range order in arrangement. In fact, a crystalline solid consists of a large number of small crystals, each of which has the same regular pattern or arrangement of particles. This arrangement repeats itself periodically over the entire crystal. A substance may have different crystal structures, which are called polymorphs. Next, in amorphous solids, the internal arrangement of particles are irregular. Though amorphous solids do not possess long-range regularity, they may possess small regions of orderly arrangement. These crystalline part of an otherwise amorphous solids are known as crystallites. Here, the disorganized arrangement of constituent particles within an amorphous solid has been shown. This arrangement is not at all regular. However, in small regions, regularity is observed. These small orderly arrangement regions are called as crystallites. Any crystalline solid can be changed into amorphous solid by melting it and then cooling the molten mass rapidly. The second point of difference is melting point. Crystalline solids have sharp melting point. When a crystalline solid is heated slowly, the temperature rises gradually until it reaches the melting point. At the melting point, it liquefies suddenly. Whereas amorphous solids melt over a broad range of temperature. This is simply due to their irregular arrangement or disorganized arrangement of constituent particles. For example, here the arrangement inside a crystalline solid is on. The arrangement is similar throughout the solid. That's why all these reasons they could be melted at the same temperature. This is called sharp melting point. But in amorphous solid, due to disorganized or irregular arrangement of the constituent particles, different reason, they will need different quantity of heat. That's why they will have different values of their melting point. That means the entire solid that melts over a wide range of temperature. That's why the melting point is not sharp in amorphous solid. The next point of difference is heat of fusion. Crystalline solids have characteristic heat of fusion. This is again attributed to the same reason due to the organized pattern of arrangement of constituent particle inside the crystalline solid. They will need a definite quantity of heat to melt one mole of any crystalline solid at its melting point. Whereas in amorphous solids due to irregular arrangement the heat of fusion is not definite. The next point is nature. Crystalline solids are regarded as true solids because they exhibit all those characteristic properties of a solid. Amorphous solids on the other hand are regarded as supercooled liquids or pseudo solids. Like liquids, amorphous solids have a tendency to flow, though very slowly. This is supported by the fact that the glass of the window pans of some very old houses or historical buildings are found to be thicker at the bottom than at the top. This shows the fluidity possessed by these kind of solids. Glass is one of the amorphous solids. Okay, and due to its flowing nature, the bottom part is thicker as compared to the top region. Here, the molecules of the solids they flow down due to gravity, and this process is very slow. This takes even hundreds of years. 
this is the reason why these kind of solids are called pseudo solids they are not the true solids or these are also called as supercooled liquids next point of difference is isotropy and anisotropy crystalline solids are anisotropic they are not isotropic here isotropic means the properties like electrical conductivity refractive index thermal expansion etc are identical in all directions but in case of crystalline solids uh, when these kind of properties we measured in different directions for the same crystal we will get different values that's why these are not isotropic and the anisotropism that is due to the regular arrangement of the constituent particles here we can observe this is one systematic arrangement of constituent particles in a crystalline solid when any physical property that be measured in different directions certain directions have been shown here one is along ab second one is along cd third one is along ef you can see here in different planes the property will arise due to difference in the arrangement of the constituent particles and due to this difference in arrangement of particles in different direction we will have different values of the physical properties like electrical conductivity or electrical resistance refractive index thermal expansion okay that's why these solids are anisotropic but in case of amorphous solids these are isotropic when the various physical properties they be measured in different directions we will get nearly the same values and simply it is due to the haphazard arrangement that is organized or the random arrangement of constituent particles next point is cleavage with knife when crystalline solids they be cut with a sharp edged tool like knife then the surface obtained is found to be smooth or regular whereas in amorphous solids they give irregular cut the surface obtained after cutting with a sharp edged tool the surface obtained is not regular not smooth okay this is your crystalline solid and this is the surface obtained after cutting so it is smooth surface it is giving a clean cut whereas in amorphous solids the surface obtained after cutting is not smooth it is irregular 